Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. Reading dresses and skirts for hand kid animation is a big topic and it can be addressed in multiple ways. I animated this skirt by hand on top of an existing wall cycle in less than 15 minutes. In this video, I will show you one of my rig setup I also use for the game Noara. It's not too complicated and it's pretty flexible. Let's get started. For this presentation, I built a simple skirt model that can be attached to Trident, the character used in my animation course alive. At some point, our skirt rig will be attached to the hip bone of our character. I will build the rig in a separate armature, so I will go into object mode, press shift A and add a new armature. I will rename it armature skirt for the time being. For better readability, I will make sure that it appears in front of everything and I will display it as wire. In the armature properties, I will also display the name of the bones and their axis. I will now create the first row of deformation bones. Your rig flexibility may depend on the number of bones used to skin the skirt. To keep it simple yet flexible, I will add a bone every three vertices. I will start by giving a relevant name to my first bone with the prefix DEF for deformation. My snapping tool is set to vertices so whenever I hold control while moving the head or tip of the bone, it will snap onto a vertex. The top of the skirt will mainly be skinned to the hips. So I place the first bone a little lower and I will now extrude it by snapping it every three vertices downward. Once I'm done, I will disconnect the bone by pressing Alt P and then I will scale them down for better readability. You can switch to individual origin to be able to scale them all at once. Once it feels clearer, I will just rename all the bones. Then I will recreate the same chain of bones three vertices away. I'm using the same snapping method as before, and using Ctrl R, I will modify the roll of the bone, trying to align its Z axis with the normals of the skirt. This is not a big deal, this will just make the animation a little more intuitive. Following the same method, I will create all the bones around the skirt. Note that for the bones on the side, I will give them the suffix .l for left side. This will allow me to symmetrize the rig a little later on. Once half of the bones are created, I will select the bones on the side with the .l suffix, and then in edit mode, I will right click and choose symmetrize. Blender will create the bones on the right for me with the right naming. We can now skin the skirt to the rig. Go back into object mode, select the skirt first, then the rig, press Ctrl P and choose with automatic weight. This won't be perfect, but I don't want to waste time in this tutorial weight painting the skirt. I can now merge my skirt rig with the character rig. In object mode, I will first select the skirt rig, then the character rig, and I will press Ctrl J. For better readability, I will first select all the skirt's bone, then I will select the hip bone, and I will move them on another layer. As usual, I'm using the Bone Layer Manager add-on by my friend Finn. You will find the link in the description. We have to address one problem. Now, as I move the bones, the skirt is no longer reacting. The issue simply comes from the armature modifier. Since I merged both rigs together, Blender can't find the previous rig anymore. When the modifier or constraint doesn't work, you can see its icon appearing in red. To fix the issue, I simply need to find my rig in the target object. Now everything is back to normal. One final tweak I will perform before we jump into rigging is to skin the upper part of the skirt to the hip bone. I will give full influence to the hip bone for the first two loops, and then I will just create a slight fall off. I will start by creating the main controllers for the skirt. I want it to be aligned with the first bone, so I will select front and back bone head and snap the cursor to it. From there, I can press Shift A to add a new bone. From there, I will select the tip of the bone and I will lower it. The idea is to align it with the next row of bones. I can easily do this by pressing G and D to constrain its motion along the Z axis and then hold Ctrl to snap on the head of the next bone. I will then extrude one bone per row of bones using the same method. Pressing E to extrude the bone, Z to constrain it along the Z axis and holding Ctrl 
to snap it on the bone head. Finally, I will select the whole chain of bone and press Alt P to disconnect the bones. This is how I always create my forward kinematic chains so that I can then move the bones independently while they are still parented one to the other. Just probably that I was missing the fifth bone, so I created it and I was good to go. I'll name the bone properly, skirt 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. The most obvious choice from there would be to simply parent those row of bones to the corresponding controller. This way, whenever I'm manipulating the bones later on, they will follow. But I'd like to be able to scale the skirt to spread it without having those bones to get bigger. The fix is pretty easy, we will simply use an intermediary bone. In edit mode, I will select all the small bones, the ones that are deforming the skirt, and I will then duplicate them and scale them down using individual origin. This way they get scaled, but they keep their current position. I will press Shift H to hide everything but the selected bone, and then Ctrl F2 to batch rename them. And I will simply replace DEF by MCH for mechanism bow. I will switch to pause mode by pressing Ctrl Tab. Again, I will press Shift H to isolate my selection. I will then select one of the bone, give it a copy scale constraint, and source the armature and the root bow. This is a good way to isolate the scaling of any bone. From there I will select all the other bone, then go to Pose Constraint, Copy Constraint to selected bones. Now I can get back into Edit Mode, press Alt-H to reveal all the bones and parent our deformation bone to the corresponding MCH bone. Be able to select through the bone, you can press Alt and right click. Once I'm done, the main controller will allow me to move the main bone's rings. And if I scale one of the controller, you can see the ring spreading, but the bones inside of the ring doesn't get bigger. The last part of this tutorial is about isolating the rotation of the hips and the rotation of our controllers. To do so, we need two intermediate bones. So I will extrude a new bone from the head of my controller and I will call it MCH skirt socket. And then I will make sure that this new bone is a direct child of the hips. Then I will duplicate this bone and I will scale it down. This will be our MCH intermediary bone. And this second bone will be the parent of our main controller. Finally, I will parent this MCH intermediary bone to the root bone. So now our controller is no longer parented to the hips, because it's now parented to the MCH intermediary bone, which is a child of the root. To make it follow the motion of the hips, I will simply first select the MCH socket, then the MCH intermediary bone, and press Ctrl Shift C to add a new constraint. I will add a copy location constraint and then a copy rotation constraint. If I now rotate the hips of my character, our controller will follow the location of its parent and also the rotation of its parent. The cool thing is that we can now choose whether it's following the rotation of the hips or not by simply playing with the influence of the copy rotation. But there is one tricky issue we need to address. When I twist the hips controller, since our controller is no longer following the rotation of the hips, it doesn't twist along. So how do I keep this nice behavior where the skirt seems to be falling, but I also get the twisting from the hips? If you're still hanging to get the answer, please consider giving a like to this video. This will greatly help me growing the channel. So let's see how we can do it. I will give myself some space by hiding everything but the bone that we are going to use. First thing I want to do is to scale down our skirt bone. So I will enter edit mode and I will hide the bone I don't want to use and I will scale it down. Then I will press Shift D to duplicate the bone and scale it up. This new bone is going to be our skirt master. In a way, the main controller for the skirt. Since this bone is a copy of our previous skirt bone, it will behave exactly the same way. It won't follow the rotation of the hips as long as the MCH intermediary bone has its constraint switched off. 
So let's bring back the twisting to our original skirt bone. I will select it, enter edit mode, and I will parent it to the hips bone. This way, it will follow all the motion of the hips, including the twisting. So if I now twist the hips of my character, the skirt will fall. But unfortunately, if I rotate the hips from left to right, it will also fall. And I don't want that. But we can see that our master controller is not following the rotation and is kind of hanging. So let's see how we can control our skirt bone with this master controller. I will first select the master controller, then the skirt bone, and I will press Ctrl Shift C and add a copy location. Now the skirt bone follows the position of the master bone. Let's repeat the process and add a copy scale. If I now scale the master controller, the skirt bone will also be scaled. So now how do I get this skirt bone to follow the orientation of the master controller but doesn't follow its twisting motion. The solution is to add a dumped track constraint. And once I've added the dumped track constraint, I want this bone to target the tip of the master controller, not its head. And this is an option available in the constraint itself. I will push the value to one, and now the skirt bone is targeting the tail or tip of the master controller. So if I now rotate the master bone, we can see the skirt bone tracking it. If I move it in space, it will follow. And if I twist the hips, it will still rotate along its y-axis. So it will twist. Because the dumped track constraint doesn't affect the twisting or the y-rotation of a bone. And this is how I generally rig dresses and skirts for Noara. The main controls allows me to easily shape the cloth, while the little tweaker bones allows me to fix any clipping or adjust the shape of the skirt if I need it. From there you can improve the rig by using custom shapes. I have a dedicated video if you want to learn how to create them. And with this you should be good to go to animate your character skirt. This is the end of this video, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one.